When it comes to tackling paint projects, paint is obviously important, but there's two other important steps. Preparation is critical and using quality accessories. Before using your quality paintbrush, stand it in an inch of water for about 15 minutes. Then spin out the excess. And the reason you do this is because a moist brush picks up and releases paint way better than a dry one. And when it comes to our rollers, we want to moisten them as well. I've rinsed this under a tap for a minute or two, squeeze out the excess moisture, and to really get all the moisture out, slide it on your quality roller frame, and spin it a couple of times down your wall to get rid of that excess. Now you've got a roller that's going to pick up and release paint better than a dry one. When it comes to opening paint cans, don't use a screwdriver. They damage the lid, which means you can't get it on and off, and even makes the paint go off quicker. I like to use a multi-tool, and one of the features of the multi-tool is it has a can opener attached. It takes lids off easily, they don't get damaged, and it'll protect the paint for longer. Now when it comes to mixing your paint, don't use a screwdriver, they don't mix paint properly. Use a flat stirring stick and even the motion, don't go round and round, pull the paint up from the bottom of the can. So you hear the dunk dunk on the bottom of the can, that's gonna mix the paint properly and you're gonna get an accurate color. Before painting, move the furniture out of the room or into the middle, out of the way. Take off life fittings, etc. Lay down drop sheets, sand your walls to make them smooth, sugar soap to clean the surfaces, gap up any imperfections or cracks, use masking tape where you don't want to get paint and you're ready to go. There's a paintbrush for every project. When you tackle large areas like walls and ceilings, you want a wider brush. It'll hold more paint and get the job done fast. Trims are another story. You want a brush that's not as wide, carries less paint and makes it so simple. And speaking of simple, you can even get angle brushes, which give you even more control. When it comes to rollers, there's one for every project. Tackling smooth areas like doors, you want a really thin roller. So this is what's called a four mil nap. Doesn't hold much paint, beautiful finish. Other end of the scale, you tackle rough surfaces like brick walls or render. You need a really fat, thick roller. It's 20 mil, holds so much paint, gets into all the nook and crannies. Then the most common areas that people paint are walls and ceilings. And for that, you want a 12 mil nap. 12 mil is perfect for giving great coverage on ceilings, but smooth enough to give you a beautiful finish on your walls. When you go to tackle small areas, use a mini roller, and they come in a variety of fabrics as well. And the reason I love these Smart Lock mini rollers is because they have a comfortable handle and they have a click on, click off mechanism and a storage container, so you can leave your roller in there, don't have to wash it out, and there's no mess. Always work on the basis you're gonna apply two coats. A standard size bedroom, when you tackle walls, you're gonna need a four litre can. When you do the ceilings, you'll use between two and three litres. And when you do your trims, a litre is perfect. Turning old paint into new is easy. Cut a piece of stocking and pour the paint through the stocking. All the old cruddy bits of paint will get caught in the stocking and you'll get fresh, clean paint. For your roller, fill the roller tray with paint up to the grill, which gives you plenty of room to load your roller properly. For your brush, don't walk around with a full tin, it's dangerous. Pour about an inch of paint into a pot, that allows you to work easily and when you take a break, you can stand your brush up to keep it moist. When loading your roller, really work it up and down the grill of the tray. Don't stick it in too deep, you don't want paint all over the ends of the roller. What you want is a roller that's loaded really well with paint, not dripping everywhere, we're good to go. When it comes to loading the brush, stick it in about halfway, don't wipe all the paint off, tap it a couple of times. Now you've got a brush with a lot of paint and it's gonna go a long way. Cutting in easily takes two steps. Step one, put the paint on with the skinny side of the brush away from the edge. Step two, angle your brush, take your time, let it glide and you'll get a perfect edge. When rolling, I like to roll straight up and down because a loaded roller should give me two roller widths up and down my wall. Now all that's left before I reload is to smooth that over to make it really smooth. Now in between coats, don't wash anything out. Simply wrap your brush on your rollers up in cling wrap. It'll keep them moist for a few hours or even overnight. But if you're not gonna paint till next week, 
Still, you can store. Get alfoil over the top of the cling wrap and they'll be perfect. We finished painting, time to clean up. And the best way to clean your brush is with warm soapy water. Rinse it through to get all the paint out. And the best tool is a brush comb. Because what the brush comb does, it not only helps you to clean out the dry gunky paint, but it actually helps all the filament of the brush stay beautifully in shape. Now we're onto the roller. Nothing different, we're using warm soapy water again. And it's simply a matter of running warm soapy water and running your hands around the roller to get all that old paint gone. So they're nice and clean and ready for my next project. And speaking of projects, on your next paint project, use all these tips we've given you and we'll help you take the pain out of painting.